Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a very successful leader and CEO of Accumulus. She is Stacy Katakura, and today we are going beyond accounting. Hey, Stacy, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey, Rusty. Thanks for having me today, and congratulations on making your 200th episode. It's exciting. Well, I, I never thought I'd get there. It's kind of unbelievable. And Stacy, you have had an unbelievable career so far in this, in your young life. And I want to, before we get into the reasons why you have such a successful business and being a successful leader, I want to go back to maybe high school. I know that you graduated from Kaiser and we've all had teachers in the past that have really impacted our lives in a, in a positive way. Did you have a teacher at Kaiser that had a big impact on you? Yes, for sure. Uh, so my my accounting teacher in high school, Mrs. Kubota, um, I took, I think, two years of accounting from her, and uh, she was so inspiring that I decided that that's what I wanted to do in my career. Um, so I, and there was actually a lot of students in the in her class that, that decided to major in accounting. Some stuck with it and some didn't. Um, but I, uh, I, I really, she, she really did inspire me to, uh, she made accounting fun. She took the act out of accounting for, for me. And, um, I, uh, I decided to, that's why that's eventually how I chose my, uh, the college that I attended, um, USD, because it was one of the top five universities, uh, um, in accounting at the time. Wow. I mean, going to USC, that's impressive for sure. And, and Stacy, I, I like hearing, you know, how that teacher had an impact on you to make, you know, accounting fun. Um, I want to ask you about your your parents. I mean, growing up, what what what's a valuable lesson that you learned from your dad? So my dad, um, my dad was so instrumental, I think, in shaping the way that I view the world and myself. Um, I remember a story from when I was in the third grade at Kahala Elementary, um, and one of my classmates at the time asked me what ethnicity what I was. Um, so I was eight years old at the time, and I didn't know what she was talking about. So I went home that night and I asked my dad, uh, "Hey, you know, one of my one of my classmates asked me uh, what ethnicity I was, and I didn't know what to tell her." Um, so he just told me, "You know, go back tomorrow and tell her you're American," uh, and so I did. Um, not knowing any better, and uh, she 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 said, um, "You're not you're you're American, but what are you really? I think you must be Japanese, uh, based on your last name." So I, um, you know, I went back home. And I told my dad, uh, and I asked I asked him, you know, am I Japanese? And he said, "Well, he goes, you're American. You are no different than anyone else." Um, and uh, I think that's why I, I think that kind of inspired me to live the way I, I live for the rest of my, that kind of was an indicator of my upbringing. Um, I, I didn't view myself as any less or any better than anyone else. Um, I always felt that I was an equal. Um, so as I grew up throughout uh, my, my education, throughout my career, I eventually um, worked in a, a lot of uh, very male dominated professions, both in accounting and in real estate and construction. And I, I never saw myself as any different and any less than the, the white males that I might have been in the boardroom with. Um, I always was uh, not afraid to speak my, my thoughts, my voice. Uh, and I think that, that that contributed a lot to my character and who I am today. I, I love hearing this, Stacy, because, you know, I want to learn about, you know, what really shaped you into, you know, the leader that you are today. And I love hearing these insights. And what what's a valuable, important lesson you learned from your mom? So my mom, on the other hand, you know, um, my family uh, as grew up, well, as I grew up, my mom was actually the breadwinner in my family. And uh, she made slightly more than my, my father did. Uh, she was a very hard worker. 
Um, but she, uh, she actually taught me the value of being financially independent. Um, so as I, uh, as I graduated from college, I, the, the minute I graduated from college, I never took another dime from my parents. Um, I always wanted to be independent, support myself. I never wanted to rely on anyone else to be able to provide me that security and that financial blanket. So I worked hard to be successful and to be, make sure that I would always be able to stand on my own two feet and support myself and, and whatever lifestyle that I wanted to, um, that made me comfortable. Wow, that's impressive. Financially independent right after college. <laughs> and Stacy, you know, personally, what's what's a big adversity that you dealt with um, in your life? So um, not a lot of people know this about me, but I my my younger I'm the big sister to my younger brother, Jared, who um, who when he was five months old, he contracted spinal meningitis. And uh, as a result, he lost his hearing at a very young age. He was only five months old. Um, so he grew up, he completely lost his hearing. So he grew up um, deaf at a time when, um, I think it was at a time when this disabilities weren't really accepted as much as they are today. And so I, I grew up, it, it taught me a lot of different things. One, I, I, I felt like I was always in, his shadow supporting him um, because my parents were very, very supportive of him and wanted to make sure that he had as much, uh, he had equal access to as much as he could. Um, but as a big sister, I was also very, uh, I wanted him to shine and I wanted to be protected. I wanted to advocate for him. And so, um, so I, I learned at a very young age. I, I was uh, six years old, I think, when we he was diagnosed with uh, a loss of hearing, complete loss of hearing. And uh, from a very young age, whenever he started started school, I was an advocate for him. And I wanted to make sure that nobody treated him any differently than anyone else. And I I think that's what kind of, I mean, that that is, um, I think, what, what drives me to be the advocate that I, that I am today for people who are you know, possibly disadvantaged, um, underrepresented in our communities. And I, I, um, I think I, I, that does contribute that, that, that I carry that with me to today to being that, that advocate for, for others. No, Stacy, thank you so much for sharing that story about your brother. Um, no, because the, these are all things I can see how it's shaped you as a person. And I want to ask you about your Accumulus team members. I mean, you've you've really brought a great team together at your at your business. Now, why did you start Accumulus? So, uh, why did I start Accumulus? So, I, I I'll go back through the beginning of my career. I um I started my career after going to USC at a, a big four accounting firm, um, Ernst and Young in Orange County. Uh, I stayed there for about about eight years and I was called back home to be a young CFO of Forest City, Hawaii, that were a real estate development and management company. Um, I was there for the for, for 10 years. Uh, I um, I kind of I grew the company from two employees uh, to about 250 employees by the time I left. Um, I, I feel like I left the, the company in really solid footing. Um, and at that point, I was looking for a new challenge, uh, a new, I, I'm the type of person that always likes to learn and grow and, and do different things. And so I, um, I was offered an opportunity to lead another outsourced accounting firm here in Honolulu as its president. Um, and I saw during that time, I saw how valuable the, um, the services that we were providing to small and mid-sized businesses in here in Honolulu. Um, after three years of doing that, I, I came to a point where I, I felt like I wanted to chart my own course, make my own decisions, and do uh, and, and just do uh, my own thing. Um, and I, that's when I decided to start Accumulus um, just uh, about five years ago now. Um, so I, yeah, over the last five years, I've, I've uh, assembled a, a, an amazing team that's been really supportive um, of where the company has grown and, and all, of it, all of its growing pains. And I'm really, really proud that I, um, I have the team in place that I have today. Oh, that's, that's really impressive, Stacey. And 
Can you share what kind of services your business provides? Sure. Um, so we are not your typical accounting firm in that we don't do, we don't focus on audit and tax. Uh, we are a CPA firm, um, but we do um, outsourced accounting. So what outsourced accounting is, the way that I, that I explain it to companies that I talk to is imagine at a large uh, large business who has a, a accounting, a full accounting department. Um, so a lot of small and medium-sized companies here in Honolulu and, and beyond uh, just don't have the resources to be able to hire uh, accounting, uh, talented accounting professionals to handle things like accounts payable, you know, financial reporting, um, generating financial statements, reconciling bank accounts, cash management, you know, forecasting projections, uh, Every, every all those types of things, um, and so that's what we do. I, you know, I draw from my years of experience as being a CFO of a large company, um, and and I, I take a, a lot of those skill sets and and kind of apply it and be be able to offer it to small um, small businesses and nonprofits here in Honolulu. Well, Stacy, when I looked into Accumulus, I'm thinking. Wow, you guys are really on the cutting edge of helping so many of these small and medium businesses. And it seems like, I mean, what you guys offer, it just enhances the uh, the leadership team and the entire company, right? Yeah, I mean, I think um, so one of our one of the areas that we specialize in, um, we have become Hano's member benefits accounting partner. Hano is a Hawaii Alliance of nonprofit organizations. So um, about 50% of our clients are, uh, are in the nonprofit sector. Um, and what I love about doing that is because is that, you know, a lot of nonprofits are, you know, famous, they're, they're underfunded, um, but they're so mission driven. Uh, and a lot of nonprofit leaders really just want to focus on on doing accomplishing their mission, and they don't want to have to worry about um, who's paying the bills. They don't want to worry about you know doing the grant reporting to their grantors, um, and that. I, so it's a it's a really good fit in that we kind of take that that off of their plate, and they can just feel you know feel that they don't have to worry about their finances, and they can really focus on delivering the services um, that they need uh, that the, that their community needs. Oh, Stacy, that's so great. And, and I like that you started, you know, because you wanted to do your own thing, man. You're doing your own thing is, is so profitable, but so helpful to so many people and companies. So really, really impressed with what you've done for the past five years now. And Stacy, you're someone that definitely goes beyond the lines and you have both of my books. And I want to ask you how you liked the books and if there were certain things that stood out to you in it. Yes, I mean, I loved I loved your books, and thank you so much for sharing them with me. Um, I think one of the things that stood out to me uh, the most, actually, there's two things, but one of the things that stood out to me the most was um, I love how you kept on saying you build uh, champion athletes of character first, and good tennis players second. And I I believe that so much, and that um, when I look for employees and I look for good talent to to bring into my firm. A cl good culture fit is really first and foremost the most important thing. I think you can teach people um, how to be a good accountant, uh, but that but that that culture fit and that character is is what's going to represent my company and what what you know what my clients are going to see. And I, I I completely agree that that's the um, that that character is really one of the most important things actually not one of the most it's the most important uh trait that uh that any employee can provide a company and then secondly the i, I like how um i really enjoyed your chapter about uh, overcoming or or welcoming adversity i think um i i've that's something that i've um, lived by throughout my my life i've overcome not only the adversity of my brother being deaf, but there's so many challenges that you uh, you overcome in becoming an executive of a publicly traded company to becoming a business owner and entrepreneur. There's so many so many challenges to overcome, but with each each challenge, um, it makes you it made me a stronger and better person. Um, I always I always whenever I have a team member that makes a mistake, I know they 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 feel awful about it, but I always say, you know, you don't 
it, a mistake is not worth making unless you learn something from it. And um, and that's what makes you the, the person that you are today. Um, I never like to make mistakes that that I don't learn from. I always um, I always welcome challenges. Uh, and because, like I said before, I love to learn and grow and do different things. And that that's the best way. I'm not the best way always, but um, it's a it's a uh, making mistakes is kind of what makes what what makes people better. No, oh, I, I like that you highlighted those two things. You know, the mindset is so important to really look forward to challenges because challenges are inevitable, as you know. And and yeah, character. I mean, that's that's all part of creating that superior culture of excellence that you have at Accumulus now. And Stacey, if you really self-reflect on you, okay, what are some reasons why you are a successful leader? I think I'm uh, kind of going back to um, uh, the culture, building a culture of uh, my company. Um, and I think so by the core values that we have at Accumulus are um, teamwork and collaboration, um, honesty and in integrity, uh, growth oriented and uh, innovative. And I think um, really being recruiting people who have who share those same values and that, that same mindset. Um, is is really really important um i think the other thing that made me ha that has made me successful is that i always um i always focus on doing what's right um and i i don't i, I always i i never i never end the day um reflecting back on the day and not feeling good about myself i always try to care and uh carry myself with the most uh, most uh, level of integrity and I treat my my clients and my my staff the same way um I I I always can say that I'm proud about um how I've treated how, how I've handled the situation and how I've treated people and I think I think the people my clients and my team members um hopefully will um will agree yeah no oh, yeah. and Stacy I know that you have a very unique CFO in your company your chief financial officer, your dog, Bogey. Yeah. And Bogey, I know that you won the best small business award, which is super impressive. Now, how gratifying is that for you to be recognized in that way? Um, it was amazing to be recognized that way. And that was Bogey, by the way, who <laughs> was making those noises. Um, but that was, uh, so we won the best small business award, um, uh, in 2021 last year, um, after, a, an, a, a very, very challenging, um, yet rewarding year in the, during the pandemic. Um, I think that's, uh, that contributed to, I think the reason why we won the award. So, um, we started the pandemic, uh, I, I um, doing a series of webinars, uh, twice a week, um, educating people the, about the financial uh, options that were available to them to take advantage of um, to help uh, help employers and businesses get through the pandemic, the PPP, the EI deal loans. Um, and I think that was, uh, we we're probably one of the, the first resources that got out there, the, our team Save Hawaii Jobs and Businesses. Um, we had uh, a lot of people following us, and I still to this day will run, run across um, somebody on the street who just will say thank you for what we've done. And I really, I never realized at that time how much of an impact we we were making um, on the community. But um, I was, I, I really, that was probably one of the things that I'm most proud about in the five year history of my company is just the way that we um, we handled uh, our, our pandemic response. Um, and beyond that, you know, we were we were lucky to be asked to. I think because of the way that we responded with the webinars and the support, uh, the pro bono support that we provided through those webinars, um, towards the later part of the year when uh, the the state and local governments were trying to um, create and and support programs for businesses that were affected by the pandemic, we were invited to be uh, a part of a few other programs um, supported by the CARES Act uh, that I was really, really proud to be a part of. I thought uh, um, there were some really innovative pro projects, uh, programs that were created to support. Uh, one was the uh, 
Aloha Connect Innovation Program. Um, it was supported by, um, it was a, a contract that was administered by DVET uh, within the state of Hawaii. Uh, but what we did was we, um, we brought in over 600 uh, participants who were uh, negatively impacted by the pandemic. They were mostly affected by maybe being in the tourism, the hospitality industries, and were on an unemployment. Um, and what we did was we paired them with over 150 companies that were in uh, different sectors, um, non-tourism, non-hospitality sectors like uh, energy, um, uh, energy, agriculture, uh, technology, um, all types, all, all all sorts of businesses throughout the the local community. And we we actually had businesses on all islands, including Niihau. Um, we placed these these uh, participants with these businesses um, that kind of reskilled them and upskilled them to different to get ready for their next step in their careers and possibly in an industry that was not so uh, not so um, affected by the pandemic. Um, and we had some really really great stories out there about about um, one of my favorite was this uh, was this guy who. Uh, went away to college to be uh, to study a, a com computer science, and uh, during his time away, his father passed away. So um, he had to come back home and not finish his college education to help support his his mother and his family. And um, he, it, in order to do so without a college degree, he was working three jobs in the at a at hotels and all in the tourism industry and. Um, when the pandemic hit, he was, he lost all, he was laid off from all of his three jobs. Um, but we were able to recruit him into our, pro, uh, into our program, pair him with a company that actually taught him how to do um, game uh, development um, and uh, to design games and be a game developer. And um, once our program ended, he actually obtained a job, uh, a remote job in the, um, in the Bay Area um being able to design games full time uh with a really good paying salary so um i was really really happy to be able to support um people to do be able to, to do what they wanted to do initially that i mean he wanted that's what he that's why he went away to college to be a computer science major but um in a long about runabout way he he ended up accomplishing his dream through our program well, Stacy, you know, for me, I mean, I, I always like to try to inspire people to turn obstacles into opportunities. And I think that's exactly what you did with that guy, you know, losing his jobs, but then really finding a different path to, to really look at that obstacle or three obstacles, losing his job, you know, in the hotel industry. To really find that great opportunity. So I, I think that's a great story for people to really realize that, you know, you got to look at these obstacles as, as opportunities, these roadblocks that we might perceive it in that way. Stacy, I want to ask you currently, what's a big challenge or challenges that you're dealing with your business right now? Um, I think what uh, we still are uh, feeling the effects of the um, the great, uh, um, what is it called? The great resignation and um, actually more so, I should say the, the staffing challenges and finding good, identifying good talent. And I think, the, I think one of the challenges that a lot of business owners face as well is just balancing, you know, the, the growth in the company with um, being able to support that growth and, and hiring and, and recruiting um, qualified professionals. I think especially what has been happening throughout the pandemic is that, you know, accountants uh, tend to be a little bit more um, conservative and not under, not knowing what the future holds. I think a lot of accountants are uh, are kind of staying put in the, the jobs that they have. And um, lucky for them, I think accounting is a is in such uh, is such a needed uh, resource that they um, I think that that field has been probably least impacted. Um, so nobody wants to let go of their their accountants when you don't know uh, what the what the future holds because you need you need somebody to tell you how much money you have in the bank and pay your bills. Um, but as a result, it's 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 been really hard to to recruit good 
professionals um, that will support our the growth the future growth of our company and our you know our services thankfully is is in so much um, demand and there's such a need for it that we have been growing quite uh, quite quite quickly um, and it's just been uh, it's hard to we've been finding creative ways to keep up with that growth but it's been um, it's been challenging. Well, you know when I I meet with tons of CEOs and they're all telling me that they're having the same issue like you are. I mean, just to really find employees to hire. And then when they have quality employees, they're really trying to keep those quality employees with them. And Stacy, what, what would be, what guidance would you offer to other business owners or entrepreneurs? Um, other business owners or entrepreneurs, I would say, you know, when I first started my company, um, I was lucky in that I had uh, the support of some key clients who helped me navigate through um, the challenges that I had that I to, to overcome some of the challenges, my fears. Um, and I was lucky or I don't know um, that I was able to be um, to, to launch my business pretty easily with not a whole lot of uh, obstacles to overcome. Um, and I think, you know, just believing in myself, um, believing that I could accomplish that and having the perseverance to work through any challenges that were, that I needed to overcome in that first year was a big payoff. Um, but I think anyone, any business owner, I think, um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. Believe in yourself. Um, uh, find your passion, which I know you talk about in the book as well. But um, if you, if you, um, I think as long as you're doing what you're passionate about, you persevere and you believe in yourself. I think you can accomplish a lot. But I think those things are very, very important um, in, in in being successful. Completely agree, Stacy. And in your opinion. Why do some businesses fail? Um, kind of on the flip side of that, I think businesses fail because um, the business owner might not have that might ha not have found a business that they're passionate enough about and want to do anything that they, that they can do to succeed. Um, other things that I've seen is, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I what we some of the services we provide is being able to provide business owners with visibility on their financials, um, and where there are what what they need to do to grow, where their growing pains are, all those things you you see very clearly when you when you understand how to read financials, and so um, I think it's always always important to understand where you are and be able to be nimble and adjust uh, and pivot uh, accordingly um, just and make decisions quickly if, if something if you've made a bad decision um, that that's not uh, that's not um, providing you with the returns that you had hoped uh, you need to be able to pivot quickly and, and adjust um, so that you're not chasing um, chasing a, a loss leader and spending too much time on it. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Stacey. And, and besides family, who who's a leader that you admire and why? Um, who's a leader that I admire? So um, somebody who has become a very good friend of mine. Um, uh, she's actually running for a uh, higher, for a political office for the first time, uh, Sherry Menorah McNamara, who is the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, she has been a, lo a longtime friend of mine, and she um, has supported me throughout my career. She's always believed in me. Um, she's always pushed me to do um, to do things beyond my comfort zone. Uh, and um, when I started Accumulus, uh, she became one of, uh, the Chamber became one of my first clients. And um, I appreciate that she she really believed in me and, and trusted uh, the the chamber's financials with with us. Um, but I I've seen her I've seen her um, grow in her own career, and I really admire the way that she always holds herself with so much uh, integrity, um, honesty. She's she follows through with everything that she says she's going to do. Um, 
And I, I just really admire that about her. She always, uh, as a female entrepreneur, I've seen how that she really supports other female entrepreneurs. Um, she supports female-owned small businesses, small businesses in general, but uh, she's really, she has really made it a point to support other women and, and myself included. Um, and she walks the talk and, and, and really goes out of her way, I think, to support, to make sure that, um, that these small businesses, small businesses are successful and they have the tools that they need to succeed. So, um, she's, yeah, she's a, a good friend of mine, but that's, uh, that's why I, that she's somebody that I, um, I admire a lot in the, in the fact that she's taken some, some calculated risks, um, but she has also, um, been just a, a great, a great leader as well. You are absolutely correct about Sherry. I mean, she's such a terrific person and a fantastic leader. And so are you, Stacy. And I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you, Rusty. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Stacy. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Stacy and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.